Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to your latest TW 2020 video with AW and our Lightning brand. We're on the road to AW Respect in 9 days time. So we've got this show, we'll obviously get next week's show and that episode of Dynamite. So we'll be looking to hopefully put towards the final touches on the card. More so next week, I think this week just kind of gets um, a cheap attempt and it gets some good matches and hopefully... Uh, another pop game, that's what I'm aiming for. It's a it's a stacked main event, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes on as the show progresses. So without further ado, let's just jump into this week's lightning. So maybe a little bit of a shorter show, five pre-show matches, 13 segments on the show, but we are in, is it Spokane or Spokane? I'm going to go with Spokane, how it's written. In Washington. So anyway, we have Matt Seidel taking on Angelico, a win here for Seidel with the Shooting Star Press, a 47 here. I feel like I'm absolutely taking a, a, a page out of, or a leaf out of, is it a page? I think it's a page out of AW's book, I think that's the quote. I just don't seem to be able to get behind Hybrid 2, and I don't know what it is, they just don't seem to ever be in a position. To get wins, but Seidel someday I want to get to a decent level of overness, so he picks up the winner, in this case a decent bit of momentum, because obviously just the live crowd will see it. We have, oh, a bad injury, a fully ruptured biceps tendon for Zoe Lucas, that could be long term effects, that could maybe see her out for 6 to 8 months, so we'll see that one. But the action saw Maki Atoy, Yuka Takazaki and Thunder Rosa defeat Indy Hartwell, Take Conte and Zoe Lucas in 8.55 when Thunder Rosa pins Zoe with the reverse DDT. 27 here. That obviously injury is going to hamper that match up. I'm just, I'm noticing, I notice a lot of matches on the pre-show that give Sakazaki. I can't seem to get her out of that ice cold momentum. So she might need to score a big victory on Lightning to, uh, to get away with that. But it's worrying. Obviously check that injury later. Catchpoint took on the acclaimed, and it was a victory for Catchpoint as Matt Riddle pinned Anthony Bones. This was a 59, some good performances there from Riddle. I'm, I'm still happy with Caster and Bones though, they are progressing without victory. But we get the overness first and then we'll get the rest later. And Killer Cross defeats Killer, eh, uh, I was going to say Killer Marshall, QT Marshall in 1006. Drags a 64 out of QT, not the most overman in the world, but of course Killer Cross firmly over that injury. And he picks up the win, gave it a bit of time as well, so Marshall will be happy with that. And in our main event, I believe, Orange Cassidy defeats Ilya Dragunov in 10 3 with the super kick. A 64 here, Cassidy looks good. The sooner we eventually get Dragunov over and get invested in him, he'll be a hell of a talent for us. But um, a lot more to come from Dragunov, as you'll see in the show. So, my big promo gets in 96, you see Kenny Omega, John Moxley, Pat, Cody Rhodes, Sabrode Lee and La Sombra Almas in the ring for an entertainment promo. So just to give the idea of the main event, six man tag, Omega, Moxley, Pack versus Rhodes, Brody Lee and Almas. We are, in this instance, tying in the feud between Kenny and Cody, the feud between Moxley and Almas. And obviously Sir Brody Lee being the mixed tag team champion can appear on both shows. And what I went for here is just basically Cody being arrogant. Obviously he doesn't have the, the, the New Age Horseman with him on Lightning. So he says it's good that he's got some people that are on the same page as him in terms of Almas. And, and happy that Sir Brody Lee is here to extend the promise of the Dark Order. Kenny says he'll always stand up against Cody. Moxley wants to get his hands on Almas. And Pac says, well, he's neither third guy, and I'd be quite interested in putting my name back in the picture for the AW World Championship. So we get a 96 promo. It was just a sort of hype package to get that, plus a, a hate angle to get that, plus at the same time, intertwining a few programs. So La Sombra, Cody and Brody struggled off script, but yeah, that's not good when Cody's a man who um, wants to be off script. Wow. Did not expect that. <laughs> Maybe should have made this the main event. It was actually the plan initially until I saw the Pentagon injury and I went, I eh, don't trust it. Super matchup, the Lucha Brothers have defeated Undisputed Honor. 
1758 when Ray Phoenix pinned Kyle O'Reilly with the Meteora, meaning the Lucha Brothers get the first defence of the AW World Tag Titles. 88. Wow. Ray Phoenix and Penta both scored the 100 because of the excellent chemistry, and that's with Penta working through a bad injury. Obviously that injury I don't think is going to last much longer, but... Yeah, wow, well, 18 minutes as well, so just under 18 minutes. If I made that 20 odd minutes, could that have pushed the 90s? i had been a treat to have seen that, but happy with that. And that was just them getting their title shot. They don't want to leave it to pay per view, they get it there, and the Lucha Bros retain. This leads to backstage another massive promo. How is this happening? 87. Mick Foley, and he is getting complaints from the inner circles, Santana and Ortiz, basically just saying, well, what the hell was last week all about? You put us in that match up. To, obviously that was to punish Kenny Omega. Why are we getting punished? What the hell did we do? And now you're getting people like Unexpected Honor getting title shots before us. Nah, nah, Foley, you better sort this. You better sort this soon. You get a few weeks or else there's going to be havoc. I'm still intrigued the way I'm going to go with this one because obviously they, in this instance, are going to be like you'd think baby faces, but I don't want to turn the fool in a circle and I don't want to split them just yet. So I might have put myself in a hole here, but we'll see how that progresses in the next few weeks. Next up, AW Live Championship action and the champ Scorpio Sky retains the championship before one over Frankie Kazarian in 8.42 with a blackout. Fourth title defence, just a simple win, gives Scorpio Sky another defence and some more momentum in a 66 rated match against his former SCU teammate. We had some action in the women's division and obviously after getting their win and uh, putting Mercedes Vernado under a bit of pressure, Riho and Hikaru Shida continue this great run of victories. Defeat Alison Kay and Leva Bates in 931 when Shida pinned Leva. A 47 here, and that is more because Alison and Leva don't work well as a team. I feel so sorry for having to job out Alison Kay, but she's due to retire in game, so I may as well utilise her fantastic skills of, of to put people over. And I think Leva's just someone I've just never really under our AW guys been able to push, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, yeah, she fills that enhancement job perfectly well to give momentum. More some momentum for Sheeda. She is seemingly being stuck in the same place despite that great run with Kenny. It's very bizarre. We then also had more women's action as the team of Chris Statlander, Saraya and Lana Austin defeat the Fashion Empire, in this case Chelsea Green, Diona Perrazzo and Dr. Britt Baker in 10.28 Statlander pinning Diona. Saraya obviously head and shoulders above the rest, that's fine as I say. This one was really to get an okay rating. Obviously Lana Austin is going to benefit from obviously being in the kind of tie team with uh, with Surya. But obviously we're trying to get Chris Statlander and Tony Storm both in the best position for taking on Mercedes going forward at that respect pay-per-view in the triple threat matchup. So uh, yeah, get her that victory and hopefully a gain in momentum. And after the matchup, just Mercedes just vents basically just saying hey, you can pick up as much wins as you want. But you and Tony Storm will never be on my level. Basic, simple promo. 72. Backstage, we have Jake Hager attack Chuck Taylor. Jake, I always say Jake Hager instead of Jake. Jake Taylor. But, uh, that brings bad, bad moral memories. But yeah, the, the plan of this one is uh, we're going to have Trent taking on Sammy Guevara. So obviously, they're in a circle of. They are still together, but obviously, Santana and Ortiz have got their priorities at the moment. So Hager takes out Chuck in a vicious assault backstage, which gathers a 54, and that allows Sammy Guevara to pick up the one over Trent in 6.45 with the 6.30. A 71, Sammy with a 94, Trent with a 49. Very short, but the matchup was going to go a bit longer, but something had to be cut to put in another angle. Which, as you'll see, is a discussion backstage between Axel Dieter Jr., David Finlay Jr. and Eli Dragunov, which gave us a 39 segment. So it's a small video backstage. Basically, you just see Finlay and Eli Dragunov just talking, and Axel Dieter comes in the ring. Uh, comes in the backstage area, in the dressing room. He's in a suit and he just says, "It's happening. He's coming in the next few weeks. He's going to be here, and this is going to change us in AEW for good." 
So there's a lot of people that are going to be arriving in the next couple of weeks. All people that I would say, well, after Big Show moved the move, I think you can say anyone would, would jump, but yeah, it's people that I think would fit the, the, the product of AW, and there'll be one coming to join Axel, David, and Ilya. Then I had Kenta defeat Matt Hardy in 10.24 with GTS, go to sleep, 65. 69 performance for Kenta, obviously just carrying on from last week. Matt Hardy was killed by the returning Kenta, and Kenta picks up the win. Cuts a promo, just simple, effective. I've made my mistakes, I've conquered my demons, and now I'm here to put many people to sleep in AEW. So a 58 promo, just Kenta basically saying he's back. Which leaves us with our main event of the evening, and it's only an 83. Ugh. Maybe, just maybe, we should have made that tag match the main event then. But that was more concern, Brody's injury, but we'll, we'll look for it anyway. Exceptional matchup. Cody Rhodes, Sir Brody Lee, La Sombra, Armas defeat Pat, Kenny Omega, and Moxley in 23 34 wins La Sombra, Almas pinned Moxley with a handful of tights. Because of the overness, La Sombra, Almas was the weak link. It's almost as if. I want to get someone over before they face Moxley at the pay-per-view. I don't know if that is definitely going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. I've had a couple of ideas of how that match is going to go. I'm just finalising the card. Thought of myself a better idea next week when I decide what the full 8-9 match card will be for respect. But 83, what was the negative sin? Inconsistencies, working injured. I just think it's one of those things. It's also crazy as well, that match probably suffers from uh, a lack of psychology if Kenny's not in that, so you can firmly see why now, Kenny Omega is practically in every main event. But an 83 is the final result, a 96 for the first promo, 84, so that'll be a gain of pop everywhere by the US. So, a bit gutted not to get the, the pop game in North America, but the reality is, you're always going to get shows like that, we will have a peak at one point, and... To be fair, we, we really just need to get the rest of the world up to get to Titanic. In terms of the US, it's not something we really... Although I keep saying I want to get the best shows ever and I want to get hundreds, of course I do. But we don't really need to focus on that at the moment because of the industry and the economic decline. But when all that's thriving, if we can get the company to a high popularity as possible gives you an opportunity to get those um, achievements, such as the top, uh, the 100k uh, attendance, 90,000, I think it's 80 and 70, I think off the top of my head, so I think I've done 70 in a WWF save, but apart from that, it's still a work in progress. So a few new items here, AAA are going to look to the future, Lightning get fantastic reviews, Hooventud Guerrera has been married, Renault Scum have won the PWG Championships and Impact are not going to offer. Adam Fornstow a new contract and Zoe Lucas a few months. We'll get an idea exactly how long that will be. I'll need to check the other screen, that's fine. There we go, he's signed, I'm happy. I think some, I honestly think, at the time of recording, so criminally underused by WWE. Uh, I'll put him as a heel at the moment, but we have, uh, yeah, he will be Garza Jr. Obviously, I don't want to use WWE names, but yeah, Garza Jr. to WWE, uh, to AEW. And what will do, a 3.11 is our TV rating is good. I'm going to pause this quickly because I don't want to spoil some of the new signings, so. Just like that, we're at this screen. It's only two months and three weeks, um, medium risk to click to perform. I'm just going to let her just recover then. I don't want to put the surgery and then screw up her, her career. But uh, yeah, basically in a month we're going to have Brody Lee back in six days. Pet a while of that injury then for the pay-per-view. Uh, Shima will be back in just under three weeks. And obviously still four months in a, a week for Isaiah Cassidy. Uh, and he'll obviously have to work into some programme. Mark Quinn, but that's it for this episode. Cheers for tuning in, much appreciated. Uh, yeah, good day, good night, bye bye. See you next week.